So today's question is, why did I create Hip Flask and the Elephant Men? Comic book lettering um, without a comic book is just lettering. And um, when I decided I wanted to not just create and use um, comic book fonts, but uh, sell them as well, um, I wanted to uh, show them in use and in fact I had approached both uh, Bob Harris the editor of the X-Men titles at the time and uh, Jim Lee who'd um, left Marvel and uh, created his Wildstorm studio and we were working on Wildcats and had created a special font for the Wildcats Adventures title uh, which we call Wild Words so I wanted to um, get permission to use either the X-Men when I approached Marvel or uh, Wildcats when I approached Wildstorm to um, promote the fonts. Um, both Bob and Jim were sort of willing but kind of confused because in the mid-90s people really didn't understand fonts, they didn't really see the potential that JG and I saw for making fonts commercially available, comic book fonts. So um, I then considered using my own character, Hedge Backwards. I've been drawing the Hedge Backwards strip for the El Segundo Herald in 1990, a little uh, free newspaper in the town I was living at the time. I considered using it, but it was too much of an autobiographical strip. So I realized that what I needed was a sort of comic book fonts mascot who was an action hero. And um, when I started thinking about this, the name Hip Flask came to mind. And I've always loved uh, names of things um, or concepts uh, that could be somebody's name, sort of um, nouns becoming proper nouns. So. Uh, you know, particularly I was inspired by, I, I remember cracking up at the name Various Flavius in Asterix the Gaul, um, and I'd come up with the name Vanity Case as a sort of female private detective for a comic book called The Sleeves Brothers, um, which I was the editor of in the late 80s. So um, out of that name, Hip Flask, it just seemed obvious to me that any character called Hip Flask would be a fedora wearing trench coat wearing hippopotamus and um, we used uh, that character in a number of ads. I approached uh, various friends Ian Churchill, Brian Bolland, uh, Brent Anderson, the artist of Astro City, um, Stephen Platt did a piece, uh, Sergio Aragonis um, and over time, the sort of character of Hip Flask uh, bubbled to the surface and I kept uh, a small drawing of him above the entrance to my office in the Comic Craft studio and would spend hours sort of looking at him and thinking, well, where did he come from? Who is he? And um, that gave birth to his arch villain. Uh, a rhinoceros called Obadiah Horn and his best friend Ebony Hyde and all these characters that you see here um, but yes he came to life as a mascot to help us sell comic book fonts but like any good character um, there's no such thing as a bad character this is something Mark Grunwald taught me years ago there's, there's no such thing as a bad character only bad writing and um, hopefully he's a good character because I became a good writer in the process of over 60 issues of Elephant Men now and um, and I've lettered them all as well using comic book fonts created by comic book letters for comic book lettering so you never know when you start down one path where you're gonna end up um, but that's the story of Hip Flask with one little um, addendum. It wasn't until I went home to my parents' house in England and looked around at all the artifacts they brought back from Africa. Paintings, carvings, 
all kinds of African memorabilia and books that I realized that uh, the seed had been planted uh, for Elephant Men a long time uh, before the creation of Hip Flask and um, there was one particular painting above the fireplace in my parents' home called The Elephant and the Ant Hill and I remember at 16 years old staring into the eyes of the elephant and the ant hill and wondering what's he thinking? Is he going to kill me or is he just watching me? Um, true story.